there are a lot of positive things we've done to improve our communication with the community colleges. And I wouldn't say that, uh, although some reporter who shall go unnamed quoted me as fuming, uh, I would say my reaction was really more one of, of, of some disappointment because we had reached out and felt like we had improved some of the communication we had through our community college work group that myself, uh, our vice chairman, our commissioner, other senior staff, and the leadership from both TAC and the trustees were all involved in. Having said that, though, uh, you know, regardless of how, uh, uh, from where the opinions about the, the, the remaining tension came from, whether how narrow or broad they are, we're not resting uh, uh, or complacent about the need to continue to improve. And we think there are things we can do to uh, amp up the, the level of cooperation and communication with the community colleges again. In fact, we're already moving in that direction. Um, we're, uh, we're talking about uh, the likelihood of a standing board task force, board level, board members involved, uh, focused on community college issues. Because we have a responsibility for the accountability data and, uh, if you will, sort of holding our, uh, the transparency of our institution's performance up to the public eye, uh, there's always the potential for some tension there. But it's, it's certainly not our role to try to micromanage our institutions. And one of the most positive things from the Sunset Report is that we've taken to heart uh, how we can improve that stakeholder interaction. Um, we've always had plenty of, of opportunity for stakeholder input, but what we learned through that process is we can do a better job of that by uh, sort of formalizing and making more transparent the uh, public testimony process at our meetings, uh, for one thing. The current and historical means of funding state institutions is just not sustainable. So we all uh, need to think more creatively about how we uh, enhance institutional revenue uh, as well as how we uh, enhance the productivity and cost efficiency of the institutions. So that's kind of a broad answer to your question, but what that could look like is um, step one, we're asking the question, what should a degree cost? What is the um, spending per student, and maybe more importantly, per degree produced, of the best performing states and the best performing countries? Um, and then once we kind of understand that benchmark, what are the, res you know, from where does that spending revenue come? Uh, how much of it is state and local? How much of it is private resources? How much commercial? And then how is it allocated? How is it spent uh, on producing those degrees? So, you know, the discussion over the last few sessions in which I've been involved has, has not focused on that. It's just focused on Texas doesn't spend enough or Texas spends too much. And so we're, ask, we're trying to ask a different question that'll change the direction of the discussion. There was one article that came out recently suggesting, you know, what about privatizing A&M and UT? But you know, that, that begs the question, well, what about all the assets that the state has created and all the vet investment they've placed in the permanent university fund and the, you know, the public lands that, that benefit those institutions? Um, so I think there's still a great benefit in being a state institution. We've just gotta, gotta change the, uh, you know, the model for, for how we uh, continue to fund what still today in, the, in this country is the best higher education system in the world. There's a reason for some concern um, that was unprecedented. So we, we hope that regardless of the budget challenges in the session to come, that the Texas grant uh, and other key loan or, uh, student financial aid programs um, you know, won't take a hit. At least will be kept on, a, on an even keel. Um, having said that, though, I think it's incumbent on uh, both our institutions and students to be sure that the money is being used wisely. Uh, so one of the key strategies for us is looking at ways to restructure that financial aid 
so that it reaches as many students as possible. Uh, we're looking at policies like uh, do we restrict it only to tuition and fees? Um, do we restrict it to being available for four years so that the student has the responsibility and the encouragement to get out in four years? Um, and, and that will take a more limited pie and spread it to a greater number of students. So th those are a couple things that we can do structurally to continue to try to impact as many needy students as possible. I've always been involved to one degree or another with higher education, so I thought I knew uh, what I was uh, getting in for, so to speak. But uh, I, you know, some of the biggest surprises I think have been um, uh, how hard uh, people work and how passionate they are about uh, whether it's within the agency or, or at our institutions and community colleges. Um, you know, there's this, I think, public perception that public servants don't work very hard, uh, you know, they're underpaid so they don't, they don't put in the time. That's not the culture that I've seen in higher education, uh, whether it's at, at the coordinating board, at our universities or our community colleges. Uh, there's a lot of passion and dedication. The flip side of that is that in higher education, that's where I would expect we'd have the most innovation. And uh, instead what I found is that some aspects of academia find it very difficult to embrace change and innovation. Um, and so sometimes progress for that reason can be slower. Um, but I'm convinced that we've got the, the innovation there. We've got the bright minds, needless to say, on our campuses and our community colleges. So um, I think rather than some of the things that have been recommended uh, uh, in the past from various sources, uh, the real answer to how do we improve uh, higher education and make that what I like to call you know, lean continuous improvement is we empower the faculty and the administrators and the folks in operations and facilities, uh, the folks in admissions. Uh, we say, here's the goal, um, here's an opportunity or a problem, and then we trust them to come up with the creative solutions that will move the ball down the field, so to speak.